enough 1D cases, let's do a 2D case. It's actually not very difficult because you just do the 1D case twice in terms of X and Y, much like how we treat kinematics or forces or anything like that. So the situation here is we have two pucks, again A and B. We have only A moving to begin with at 6 meters per second, say towards that way, which we'll call positive X. And now it's important to declare positive y as well. vb1 is equal to 0. And at time 2, I'm going to continue with that track, but a shoots off that away at 30 degrees at some unknown speed, but we know the direction. And we also know the other one heads off 60 degrees the other way. So B is here, moving downwards like that. So you can see how it's a 2D problem because there's um, things moving in two dimension, which is great because it lets us solve for two unknowns. Even in 2D, the same conservation momentum still applies because of the vector quantity. And again, there's no external force that are in play because the collision happened so quickly that that force is going to trump any possible friction and in fact it's an air hockey table so there's very very little friction that we're dealing with so again we treat that as zero this thing we can actually break down into x and y where we can talk about the x momentum being the same before and after and the y momentum being the same before and after as well and that's all 2D momentum conservation is. You just have to treat the X and the Y separately. So this we can say MAVA1X is equal to MAVA2X plus MBVB2X. You can write the same thing for the Y. These are all vectors because positive negative sign still matters. And you once again notice how important subscript is. In this case, we have one for the puck, one for the time, and one for the X or the Y as well. Squeeze out a little more space because I still want to see my diagram. Let's look at the Y direction first. Uh, in this case, I'll actually call my MA because they're identical pucks in this case. It's all M. VA1Y, well, there's nothing in the Y direction because this is perfectly horizontal. So that all goes to zero. It's equal to MVA2. The Y component is over here, and that's going to be sine 30 degrees plus MVB2 sine, in this case, 60 degrees because it's this part here. And this is negative. The M cancels out because there's nothing there. We can work out that VA2 sine 30 degrees is equal to VB2 sine 60 degrees. So here we can already solve for one in terms of the other. So VA2 is equal to sine 60 over sine 30 of VB2. Now we're ready to deal with the X. And in the x, instead of the sine, we use the cosine. And in this case, they both go in the positive direction. Right there, positive x, positive y. All the m again cancels out because everything's nice and identical. This guy is, is known. We can sub this mass into here. So all we're left with is vb2. So we can basically factor out vb2 and divide all this things underneath, which conveniently works out to be a perfect two underneath. So we have three meters per second. And that's what we're after in part A. So after the collision, the second puck is traveling at three meters per second. For part B, we're going to have to confirm that the collision is in fact elastic. And I'll remind you what that means is that the total kinetic energy before and the total kinetic after is exactly the same. So we don't know that. So let's find out what is my total kinetic energy before. Well, that's 1 half mA1 squared plus 1 half mV2 
b1 square. We know that's 0, and we know the speed initially is 6 meter per second, so it ends up being 18 times m, whatever m is, in terms of joules. For ke2, we just use the speed for time 2 for both a and b. We've got this, that was 3 meter per second. But we didn't quite work that out yet, so we can solve for that fairly quickly, remembering that this still holds true. Subbing in the numbers, we got 5.196152, keeping lots of digits. So we can put that in there as well. And that works out exactly to be 13.5 times m, and then 4.5 times m, which works out to be 18m worth of joules. So these two things, being the same before and after, therefore the collision must be elastic. The one thing that probably zipped by you too quickly, but it's quite important, is that when you deal with energy, all we care about is the speed. You notice even though these two velocity go in different direction, we add these up just like numbers because of the squares are in play here. So energy we can treat as scalar by dealing with just speed. Momentum, we can't. Momentum, like I showed you in part A, we need to deal with the x and the y components separately. And so you're basically doing conservation momentum problem twice. One in the x, one's in the y. 